Well, that was disappointing. You know, there's a few things in this game. I think that, you know, you, well, it was number one, it was a really good game. I, I'm in my hometown of Curtis, Nebraska. We're having an all school reunion. I know you don't give a shit about that, but uh, this is where the video is. Uh, let's see, a few things about the game. Number one, uh, it's a very physical game by both teams. Uh, I don't agree with sitting on the ball at the end of the game and going into overtime. You have Jalen Lloyd, who's an incredibly fast receiver. You had Dylan Royola, who, you know, for the most part, played a pretty good game. But I think that the thing that we saw tonight is that he is a freshman quarterback. For the first time, we saw that, yes, he is a freshman quarterback, and he isn't, you know, the savior of everything. And, you know, I wouldn't get too down on him for that because, for fuck's sakes, he's a freshman quarterback. Uh, I would, I will say that if we're really that disappointed in this, well, number one, we don't break our streak of losing to, now we're 25 games in a row losing to ranked teams. Maybe we'll break that this season. Maybe we won't. We'll just have to wait and see. Don't get too down on it. Uh, Illinois played a very good game. You know, we could argue about whether or not they outcoached Nebraska. I think in some phases they did. I didn't look at the stats. I was in a hometown bar. I didn't really, you know, we couldn't hear anything but screaming. It was a lot of fun right up until the end, and then everybody was massively disappointed. Okay, back to Dylan Royola. You know, don't get too down on the guy. He's learning. And, you know, this is a setback. It's not that huge a setback if, unless you thought we were going to be 7-0 going to Ohio State. And I think that's why the number one reason why people are going to be most disappointed about this is there was a lot of convincing about that. There was a lot of stuff about, you know, even throughout the offseason about, oh, we could be 7-0 and going to Ohio State. Well, I think we still have teams to beat. You know, Illinois is one of those teams. They're going to remain ranked, and we're not going to remain ranked. And... Again, it's a long season. Uh, what else happened in the game? Our defense, yeah, there was just dumb mistakes throughout the game that were just really dumb. You know, stuff like face masks that gave Illinois free yardage. Uh, you know, I couldn't, the, the one call in the end zone uh, where, you know, it looked like it was going to be a touchdown. They ruled it a touchdown, and then it turned out to be uh, an interception, I don't know how they ruled that like that, but to me it looked like it hit the ground. And it shouldn't have been a touchdown or anything, but just an incompletion. I'm sure we can go back and find a lot of points in that in the part of the game where, uh, you know, there was little things that cost us the game. The shot, the surprising thing about it is, another surprising tidbit, uh, Nebraska actually won the turnover battle and then lost the game, which was really disappointing. Uh, I think on the fourth and three that we had, you know, later, I think it was in the fourth quarter, you know, we know that our field goal kicking isn't good. We have a backup kicker in there, and you still send him on the field to make a 39-yarder when, you know, you were picking up pretty – you had a good, pretty good chance at a percentage of a completion and a percentage of – converting the third down or, or the fourth down. So I guess I didn't understand that decision either, but, you know, hindsight 2020, I told people in the bar we should have gone for it again because of the field goal kicker situation. And uh, that probably was another point at which we lost the game where we had the chance to win. And then we just didn't come through, I think, with the right coaching decision, honestly. But again, again, this is the instant reaction. This is what I do is look at a game and go, what the hell happened there? I don't know what the stats were. I think that, that we ran the ball fairly decent at times. And then, uh, you know, again, the Illinois defense uh, did a really good job of shutting down a lot of the offense. Uh, I kind of wish we would have been more physical in the running game in terms of, you know, we go back in the shotgun, I guess. Maybe, well, this is our kind of our offense, I guess. But we go back in the shotgun and we run inside zone. You know, maybe if we put more, I don't know, eye or maybe put an extra blocker in there, but then you're just bringing another defender over that you have to block. One of the things I did notice is that we played, we again played, it looked like we played a whole bunch of guys. 
Uh, Gunnar Gotchula was in the game for a while. Uh, I'm not sure why that was. Again, I couldn't hear anything what the announcers were saying. Probably go back and review before Monday night. The overtime, obviously, was... Well, it was just shit, wasn't it? I mean, they basically almost scored in a play, and then they scored... They scored on a post. And if you're going to, you know, Matt Rule talks about winning games like this. And it'll be interesting to see what Matt Rule says. Uh, whether he just says it's on me or we still need to learn game, how to win games like this. And it's pretty obvious that we still need to learn how to win games like this. The last overtime game uh, Nebraska has won 10 years ago. So there's still a lot of work and there's still a long ways to go. What else can I say about this game? Their quarterback was better than I expected. Uh, I, honestly, their offense was a little better than I expected. Uh, but not a lot, you know? Again, a very hard-fought game. Don't get too down on everything. Uh, there's still a lot, of, a lot ahead of us, and I think it's going to be a really tough season for everybody in the Big Ten. You know, unless your name's Ohio State, I just put them above everybody else. <sighs> What do we got? We got Purdue next. That looks doesn't look difficult. And I'm sure it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, this week with Matt Rule and what he says about this game. And I'm kind of reiterating, aren't I? And my arms are getting tired holding up this phone out here in the middle of nowhere. So I will end very soon. All right. I'm in Curtis. I'm at an all-school reunion. I've already seen a bunch of people I haven't seen for decades. Uh, you know, you always do the, uh, I haven't seen you since I've been dead thing. Well, that's true for so many people here. Uh, a lot of memories being recalled. So it's it's been fun. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow with a lot of other teams. And I am kind of just rambling on now, aren't I? Really kind of a, just a disappointing loss. I, again, it goes back to what I think I, I said last week, and that is you're disappointed because you have expectations. And, you know, it's up to you whether you feel like that's bad or good. That's why I'm saying don't get too down on yourself because I don't think it was the Nebraska team themselves that said they were going to be 4-0 after this game. I don't think they've ever said anything about being 7-0 going into Ohio State. I think there's a lot of people like me that are, you know, the pundits, the guys that talk a lot. Uh, we're the guys that convinced everybody we're going to be 7-0 and going into Ohio State. Well, we're not. Don't lose hope on this season. There's still a lot of fun ahead in this season. Disappointing, yes, but not the end of the world. Uh, love you all. Take care. And I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon, and I look forward to your comments about this game. Take care. And go Big Red. <laughs>